The galaxy has a crisis. Again. Let's talk about it. Good galaxy night. This is... Valparaiso. And this is Football Galaxy, and what's up, Galaxy guys? Welcome to a second episode of a Good Galaxy Night se- uh, podcast show, series, whichever you want to call it. And uh, today's topic is will be really interesting because it's pretty much what the Galaxy are suffering through right now. The designated player crisis, of which who you're going to sell. Either Giovanni Dos Santos, Jonathan Dos Santos, or Roman Alessandrini. And we all love Alessandrini. We all hate Giovanni Dos Santos. But the thing, that, the problem is, we're not the front office of the galaxy. We're not the ones who can decide. They're the ones who can decide. So right now, we're all twitching our teeth, crossing our fingers to see who in the world is going to leave and who's going to stay. That's what we're going to talk about your host football galaxy was pretty so usual so let's go right into it so a question of the day of the podcast which i am i will tell you guys to put in the comments and to tell us your answers and here's the question if you were the coach of the la galaxy who would you get rid of to solve this crisis if i was the coach They're, yeah, it's a trick question. They're definitely. I said. I said this last time. They're definitely going to get rid of Alessandrini. It, it, it's like I don't. I don't expect them to make the right move, and they're going to keep uh, Giovanni. By the way, his brother Jonathan said that Giovanni was staying without a doubt. So, yeah, that's kind of going into the bye bye Roman, which really sucks because we all know that Alessandrini at this point really is better than Giovanni dos Santos. Which is kind of weird because Gio is the most is more valuable when it comes to money than Alessandrini. But technically, when it comes to skill wise, it's the Frenchman who outbeats the Mexican. Well, according here, this information brought to you by SBI, um, the Galaxy faced one of the toughest decisions of Major League Soccer off season, and this is like a really bad problem to be honest. The coaches, the general manager Guillermo Barros Esqueloto. He has to come and make a decision by March 2nd, which is not far away. We're only like about literally, we are literally one month away from March 2nd. So he still has a month, but something has to be done before that. Now, Slatan Ibrahimovic, he is officially confirmed to be in the team. He's not going anywhere, so don't worry about him. The three players you have to worry is between Jonathan Dos Santos, Giovanni Dos Santos, and Roman Alessandrini. And obviously the question is, which of those three will leave? Now, there's rumors pointing out how Giovanni Dos Santos is the most probable player to leave. But then you got Jonathan Dos Santos, who just recently, like you said, admitted that he's going to stay without a doubt. But that's not his decision, like I say. This is the decision of the front office. The question is, who are they going to pick? So the thing with me and all this, like, is it Joe? Is it Joe? Uh... <laughs> Giovanni. Giovanni, I was gonna say Jovinko, and my brain, my brain was like, no, not that guy, dude, wrong team. Um, the thing with Gio, uh, Giovanni and uh, Alessandrini is that if if uh, the MLS works like uh, European, like the Premier League or whatever, then you find yourself where people in the team they talk, but they don't have the final say, and they really don't know what's going on. I really hope this is the case with Giovanni, with uh, Jonathan dos Santos, that he's uh, he's just talking because he loves his brother and whatnot. But he really doesn't know, and he doesn't have any kind of insider info. Because I really want jo- uh, Giovino, uh, uh, Giovanni, Giovanni, Giovino, Giovanni out. <laughs> Is that? It's not just you. I'm pretty sure there's so many fans out there. I think everybody wants him. Yeah, out. everybody wants him out. The thing is, for the sake of keeping the Santos brothers together, they could go with Alessandrini. Yeah, and I, I really think that's what they're gonna do. Which would suck, and it would be a dumb move for the team. It would be horrible for the team. Because here's the thing. you're you, If you're the manager, you can't 
be thinking on the good of the of, of like say like oh Individual I like players. yeah yeah like oh I want the Dos Santos brothers to be together just because they're brothers no you have to think for your team you have to know what's best for your team and between those two players Roman Alessandrini is a better player for the team than Giovanni Giovanni only scored like about like four goals total probably in the last season well Alessandrini scored like about seven or nine I think right so this is like about the team not about keeping two bros together this is not the first time there's there ha- there's been more than more than one time since the since Giovanni and Jonathan have not been in the same club they have been separated in their careers so like you got but you got to think about the team you know i'm also a huge arsenal fan and the parallels that i'm seeing between LA Galaxy and Arsenal are just sad and uncanny it just seems that both teams, the both teams have problems with defenses. They both have uh, problems with like not buying players when they should, letting go of the players they shouldn't. Yeah, it's just I see what's going down with LA Galaxy as I'm watching what's going down with what's been going down actually for years with uh, Arsenal, and it's just the whole thing is just really cringy for me. Well, according here to Major League Soccer in their information, uh, Guillermo Barros Esqueloto, he said. That right now the problem, uh, for Ford, uh, hang on, let me let me let me say that again. Uh, the whole situation of the four designated players slot, there is no problem according to him, but uh, we still don't know what what he's gonna say or what he's gonna do. Now he has been he now according to the quotes he has been and some interviews he has been saying about like, oh we've been talking to him, uh. And we just need to talk to him more further. But here's the thing. He never specified who him is. In other words, he never said who they're talking to. All he said was him. So that's the other thing. We, st- we still don't know who it is. We'll, we'll, we will not know until further notice, obviously. But then again, if you were a coach, would you also listen to the fans? Because all the fans are saying, kick you out. So if you want to, fa- if you want to make the fans happy, then... Obviously, you would do that, but the thing is, are you that type of coach that will listen to the fans? I don't think there's a professional management organization anywhere that would make their decisions based on the fans. Like, the fans could have an influence, like if the management is really unhappy, and on top of that, they know that the fans hate this person, then they would be like, okay, we're, this guy's got to go. But not the other way around. If the, hates, if the fans hate the person, but management like them, or they see potential in them, I don't see that management's going to be swayed by public opinion. This is like J.C. Zardes. The fans did not want him at all in the team. He was sucking a lot from left to right. He hardly scored any goals for the Galaxy. And what did what happened? The Galaxy traded him. They sold him to Columbus Crew and traded for Ola Kamara. The question is, I mean, ob- obviously, um, this is not going to happen with Giovanni Dos Santos. The Galaxy will not trade anyone for Gio. Gio will have to leave. But the question is, will he leave? In fact, peop, uh, the rumors are that uh, what the Galaxy would probably do is that to cancel Giovanni's contract and and um, and let him go off the team. Yeah, this whole incident with the designated player, it's like Giovanni doesn't do anything or hardly does anything while Alessandri's proved himself left and right. I mean, to the point, like you said, to the point where the fans are just fed up. I mean, I'd say think it's a clear making Giovanni the designated player is just insanity, and it's just going to frustrate the fans even more. Well, here according to Major League Soccer, this news is brought to you by Major League Soccer, so the credit goes to them. The Galaxy have four designated players after a new contract boosted Slatan Ibrahimovic the status, as they can pro- uh, possess as wait as they can possess. Just three when the season kicks off on March 2nd against the Chicago Fire at Dignity Health Sports Park. The most persistent speculation has concerned Giovanni Dos Santos' departure, either via transfer with LA, with LA likely picking up part of his salary, or the club buying out his contract, or a trade sending Roman Alessandrini to Montreal. But Barros Esqueloto would prefer to keep all four. Watch, perhaps, for one of the holdovers, Alessandrini Dos Santos, or his brother, Jonathan Dos Santos, to take a restructured deal or for the Galaxy to use targeted allocation money to lessen his impact under the salary cap. Now, this is words from the manager himself. 
We don't have any problem about the designated player, Escalotto said after Wednesday's training session during LA's first media available of the preseason. We are talking with the player about that and no problem. I think maybe it can happen. I think we need to talk, talk with him. Now here's the problem. It's not that he thinks it's a good idea. This is the league. The le This is the rules of the league. Obviously, yes, in order to solve this, just keep it four. But the rules is that you can only have three. That's are the league rules. You have you can only have three players. You can't have four. Now, what pretty much what started this whole conflict was the Galaxy signing Slatan Ibrahimovic to a designated player uh, contract. If that weren't if that didn't happen, this whole situation wouldn't happen. We wouldn't have had a problem right now. Exactly. But now that this happened, now we have this whole crisis of which the Galaxy has to pick which one it is. And whoever it is, the fans have to be okay with it, and they cannot argue because it already happened. Okay, FG, uh, to quote uh, Toby, it's like, let's pretend we live in this real world, okay? And in a real world, we the LA Galaxy, now that it has they have the new coach, uh, potentially uh, could have start really tightening the reins. Uh, and tightening everything to have a really like a really cool, good team, and I can imagine a team with like Alice, um, with Alessandrini, and I, I actually John, I don't have a problem with Jonathan Dos Santos really, and uh, we've had a lot of good players leave. Keep the good players that we have. Start bringing in new and new blood, and we could see LA Galaxy become the LA Galaxy of yesteryear. Now, one thing I want to bring up is this whole thing with uh, Uriel Antuna. And, yes, yes. and I'm kind of like, okay, I realize this is common practice all over the planet, whether it's MLS or not. I, I am just not a big fan on loan players because it's kind of like glory for today and nothing for tomorrow. <laughs> but um, I mean, and I realize that sometimes you can buy them out and whatever. But what do you think about, I'm not, I'm like, I'm like, whatever. What do you think about Uriel and Tuna coming into the LA Galaxy? I think this is a great idea because, for one thing, we do we do we do need to fix those problems in the midfield, obviously. And since you're an Ars since you with an Arsenal fan, you understand that Arsenal has the same pro same problem. Yeah. Both Galaxy yes, yes. and Arsenal, they have major defense problems which they need to fix, or else you're gonna just the goals go from left to right into the back of the net. So you need to fix that. But with Oriel and Tuna. With another addition in the midfield, I think this is great because just like just like uh, Dennis De Close, uh he said that um, that we need extra sprint, extra skills, and this is pretty much what this guy has. So I think it's a good idea, not a bad decision by the Galaxy, and this is a guy coming from Manchester City, so he has already knowledge of Europe. Yeah, I think this is a good this is a good deal. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd be happier if this guy was a permanent. I think that's where I'd be happier with this uh, real guy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you do want to have bring over players. If you bring over players, young players, by the way, not people that are coming to retire. Um, but if you bring in uh, players that already have European experience, I mean, that's just a good thing all around. I mean, that's a win-win. Well, yes, you're right about that. I totally agree with that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the whole problem of who you have to leave because someone has to leave whether or not you like it someone has to leave the team. yeah i'm gonna leave if they don't <laughs> if they don't wrap this up soon so um brought to you uh, um here brought to you by major league soccer let's go back to the whole geo problem and this time we're gonna listen to some words from from jonathan santos according to here brought to you by major league soccer again credit goes to them Gio stays without a doubt, says Jonathan Santos to reporters at Galaxy Training on Wednesday, as reported by FootballMLS.com. The team needs him. He is a great player. Not all the teams have a player with the quality of Giovanni. We need him this year, and he will stay. The midfielder also noted. I love Jonathan Santos, but in this case, I have to disagree. We did not see his quality for the past two years. We haven't. You know what? Here's my personal opinion. Giovanni needs to st Giovanni needs if you're going to stick around and we're just going to get rid of a better player to have him. I would really wish that he would knock it off with the Zardis crap and start acting like Giovino De Santos again. Giovino. Giovino. Giovanni. Giovanni. Holy crap. Gio, how about that? Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Because that's what Zardis did. I mean, I I can't stand that dude no more because towards the end of his LA Galaxy career, Zardis was just filling the bench, dude. He wasn't doing anything. He wasn't making goals. He wasn't putting in an effort. 
the minute that he switched over, boom, goal after goal after goal. Uh, well, it was Columbus crew, right? And, Zardes, yes. Yeah. And, and and when I saw that, I was I was really ticked off because basically it's like, I don't feel that that's professional. You were going to switch teams. That's fine. But you still give it your all as a professional. And I'm starting, and I'm like, I really hope that's not the case with Giovanni. Yes. Now, after the words of Jonathan, let's go to the words of Roman Alessandrini. Hear what uh, hear what he had to say about the whole matter. Again, brought to you by Major League Soccer. It says here, if I have to choose, I stay there. I stay like as a DP or a designated player for short. Uh, the French winger said, "I don't want to be too much confident, but we work. I did the last two years. I think I have to stay like a DP. We'll see what's going to happen." The club has to make a choice. Soccer is complicated sometimes, but it is what it is. We'll see what the club is going to do, and we have to accept it. Now, he's completely right about this, and I agree that he deserves to be a DP. He has it all. He, This guy, this is the player who has quality, not Giovanni. This guy has pure quality. The Galaxy, this is probably one of, this, one of their best signings in the past two years, signing Roman Alessandrini. For me personally, seeing him go away this year will just be super sad. Um. Yeah, I know. I agree a hundred percent. You know, going back to that quote that is uh, that J- just Jonathan Dos Santos said about Gio staying without a doubt, that doesn't mean anything. I really, I'm, I'm still banking that LA Galaxy and the coach are going to do the right thing, and they're going to separate the Dos Santos brothers. And as you said, they didn't used to be in the same club. And you know what? From from like you know from a gushy mushy position, it's nice that the brothers are together. They play for the same club. That's awesome. But if one of them, but you, that doesn't come to play in professionalism. If one of the players, no, even if they're if they have a brother in the same squad, in the same uh, team, if one of the players, whoever they are, if they're not cutting it, for the sake of the club, they have to cut that person off. And in this case. The clear decision is Giovanni Dos Santos. I really want to see that guy go. <laughs> yeah, everyone has, everyone wants to. Well, um, back to the MS article. It says here that neither of the Dos Santos brothers spoke Wednesday, and Ibrahimovic said he was hopeful all three remained with the club. Hopefully everybody gets satisfied and happy, and we can continue to work just like we're doing. Now, what I'm reading here, and what I've noticed, it seems that everyone in the galaxy, in the club, they want all four to be in the club, but the thing is, they all know deep inside that one of them has to go. Yeah, and the yeah. person that gets the short end of the stick is Gio. Is Gio. Of course. Um, the question is, though, here, here's a good question. Do you think the office, they know what the fans are, that the fans want Gio out? Well, I of mean, cor- of course probably, they do. The yeah. question, but again, um, they may not, they, they most likely don't care, and it, it really depends on money and on professionalism, like how they play as a team. Uh, if the front office loves Gio, he ain't going nowhere. Right. Well, it says here that according to uh, uh, Escaloto, he said that I think we have a really good roster, but maybe we can get additional players more in defense. All good. Good. You hear, you hear, you heard yeah, that? Yeah, it's about time. Uh, we are seeing our possibilities. We have important players like Ibra, Roman, both to Santos, so we will see what possibilities we have so that all our players have the freedom to feel comfortable on the field and give their best. Now, I don't know about you, but Guillermo Barros Esqueloto, yes, we haven't seen a game with him in the Galaxy so far, but as for, like, right now, he's been a great coach. Like, right now, the Galaxy has incredible staff. I've, I'm really, like, happy with their staff right now, and I'm pretty sure that we're about to see the best of them for, through the 2019 season. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I really, I really am hopeful. Uh, I have to like push down my cynicism and uh, what's what I've seen in the past, but I'm really hopeful that LA Galaxy will now be turning, uh, turning a corner, and 2019 is going to be a really good year for LA Galaxy and for LA Galaxy fans. Oh yeah. Well, so we got Oriel Antuna, who is a new player. Uh, on loan, as we said. Uh, the Galaxy also got uh, Matt Lampson uh, from Minnesota United, a, a, a veteran goalkeeper. Uh, I believe he's replacing uh, Brian Sylvester, who was in the, in the club last year. Never played a single game, but he's now out of the club. 
Um, I think I think Matt Lampson could be a good player. I mean, we sure we're gonna have to see him play, but I think uh, he could be a good goalkeeper. Although I'm pretty sure David Bingham will be playing in the fields for for probably most of the season. That is, if he gets injured, which is a possibility. Goalkeepers get injured, so we're yet to see um, what will happen with uh, with Matt Lampson. But I think the big the big uh, question of what will happen of the new player will be Orion Antuna. Will be we will. We be seeing good stuff from him. Well, as it is right now, um, Alessandrini is a DP. Obviously, we ju- you just covered all that. Like, who's a DP and who's not? Right. Here's the thing, though. They're bringing in Antuna as a loner. So, the conspiracy theory. They're bringing him as, as a one-year loan. Maybe we'll keep him after the year. We'll buy him out. Maybe we won't. I don't know. But what a coincidence is that he's coming in as a midfielder. And you know who else is a midfielder? Giovanni. Alessand- Actually, no, yeah, yeah. Alessandrini. No, Gio's a. I thought Gio was a striker. Anyways, I mean, he's he's like he he's can play forward. midfielder. He can right, but Alessandrini forward. is a midfielder. So, what a coincidence that they just signed Antuna to come in as a midfielder to what to possibly fill in the, the gap that's going to be left open by a departing player. That would suck. That would honestly suck if that was for real. Like, I'm so jaded and so cynical when it comes to management, <laughs> soccer club management decisions, that I expect them to always go for the wrong decision. So, that's why I'm, I am completely convinced that we're going to see, we're going to see the departure of, of Alessandrini, and it's going to, and I'm going to have to pull my hair out. <laughs> well, hopefully that will not be a case, but then again, it is a possibility. And like we've said several times before, we'll just... The only thing we can all do as Galaxy fans is just wait until further notice to see what the front office will do. And by the way, let me tell you, the fans, they have not been happy with the front office since last year, since Ziggy Smith was coach. The fans have not been happy with the front office, and I'm pretty sure they haven't been happy until now. You know, I kind of feel like I live in a parallel universe where Arsenal is known as the LA Galaxy in the, in the other universe. <laughs> because it's the same thing. They finally got rid of Arsene Wenger, at, and they got the, the coach replaced at Arsenal. But the problem is, what, I mean, part of the problem was him, but part of the problem, the bigger problem, is, is management. Yeah. And management is still there. And they've started to lose, like, uh, uh, the, um, oh, what's the, the coach that uh, finds the players and whatever. Um, they've been losing like the good the good coaches and trainers, um, not coaches but trainers, um, because of management because they've just gotten frustrated and kind of like management is screwing things up. The team isn't isn't going forward, so they're like, forget this. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going with the team that has vision, and and unfortunately that's on the Arsenal side. And unfortunately I see that with LA Galaxy, and I don't want them because these are my two favorite teams in the world. Right. Well, let's go and check out the full 2019 roster of the Galaxy, brought to you by the LA Galaxy themselves. Uh, according to them, this is the official preseason roster, uh, 2019 preseason roster. Uh, goalkeepers, David Bingham, Justin Von Stieg, and Matt Lampson. Uh, defenders, Hugo Arellano, Rolf Felster, Tama Hilar Arce, Dave Romney, Jorgen Shelvik, Daniel Steris, uh, Julian Araujo, and... Okay, can you please help me pronounce this? What name? is that? What are you looking it's at? It's the last name. What? <laughs> well, the last name is Triatore. It's an Italian name, but it's it's it it, it die die. No, <laughs> um, no, that's too dark. Uh, it's I'm just gonna call it Dia 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 Dia. Yeah, it's Dia Dia. Didi, how about Didi? Didi. <laughs> Didi Torora. What's up, Didi? Okay, as for the midfielders, Roman Alessandrini, <laughs> Emmanuel Boateng, Servando Carrasco, Jonathan Dos Santos, Giovanni Dos Santos, who, hey, there you go, midfielder, not forward, midfielder. All right, whatever. So then again, <laughs> then again, we could use your theory, but replace Roman with Gio. We may, maybe Antuna might be a replace for Gio. Maybe. Okay, um, all right. Juninho, Perry Kitchen, Sebastian Lejet, Bradford Jameson IV, Joe Pedro on loan. Emil Cuello and Don Chilao. I want Joe Pedro back. Joe Pedro, come back home, man. I think he would be a great midfielder. And finally, the forwards, Slatan Ibrahimovic, Ola Kamara, Chris Pontius, and Efrain Alvarez. I think we have a good roster. I really do. Yeah. Hopefully with... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Hopefully with this new coaching staff, um, things will go well for the Galaxy. I am in full hopes. I think we will obviously make it to the playoffs this year. 
with or without Giovanni, I do believe we'll make it to the playoffs. And I think that this year will be a lot better than last year or the year before. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree 100%. Ditto. All right, fellas. So as we leave the podcast, I'm going to uh, pretty much leave by saying this question to you guys. And your job is to post in the comments and, tell, and answer the question. Just tell, put, the, put your answers in. And here's the question. And I'll repeat it again because I said it at uh, the beginning of the podcast. If you were the manager of the LA Galaxy, who would you get rid of between the three designated players? Jonathan Santos, Giovanni Santos, or Roman Alessandrini? So, so think about it and place your answers in the comments below. But until then, thank you guys for listening. Please leave a like, a comment, and be nice about it. Subscribe, and don't forget to share because it helps us out. Stay tuned for more good Galaxy Night podcast episodes. And until then, have yourselves a good Galaxy, Galaxy Night. Adios, Galaxy guys.